What is up, guys, and welcome back to TF Squared. I'm Tarek Fahmy. This is a new segment we're calling The Breakthrough, where we sit down and talk all things football. For episode one, it's a pleasure for me to introduce professional footballer, USL, forward Madison attacker, Noah Fusion. Noah, thanks for being here. How are you doing? What up, Tarek? Uh, thanks for having me on the podcast. I'm doing well. Just Lord, yeah. the first week of preseason, so... Yeah, no, thank you. We appreciate it. We know you're a, a busy guy, so uh, thanks for thanks for sitting down with us. Why don't we just start with you telling us where you grew up, how you started playing, and then, you know, we'll break down your career from there. Yeah, definitely. So um, I grew up in Los Angeles, California, and like a, a little bit outside the city in a place called Glendale. And, um, you know, I got my start when I was like three years old, I think was the first time that, you know, I was ever introduced to football and I went to a little camp by my house, and then when I uh, when I turned six, my parents enrolled me in like a little rec league, and then that's when I started playing organized football. And I, you know, I just never really looked back from there. Right. So you're sort of like doing your thing, playing from club to club, and then it's kind of, it's time for you to like take the next step in your career. You're thinking about going D1, going overseas, but I know ultimately you choose to go to England. Why don't you talk us through like that decision? Yeah, so, you know, from the time that I really started taking football seriously, I always knew my goal was to, and my goal still is, to play in Europe, play in a top five league, Champions League football, all that stuff that, you know, you dream of as a kid. And I, for myself personally, I didn't think going through college and coming out when I was 22 and then trying to find a club and starting my career that late was the best option for me. And so... You know, as I approached the end of high school, I explored some different options. And originally, I was going to go to Brazil and play over there out of high school. But, you know, um, my mom, who's very important to me and her opinion really matters, she was really pushing for me, you know, as a young, like, African-American man to have my education. So, you know, with uh, I2I and going to England, it was kind of a compromise between me and her where I could get education and be playing abroad and have the exposure that I wanted to get in the coaching and training. So that ultimately is what led to me going to England rather than staying at a university or playing D1 in uh, the States. Right, yeah, that's great. So you're in England now, you're playing against top academies. How was that experience for you? How do you judge yourself against these types of other players? Yeah, I thought it was uh, a great experience, you know, being able to see these guys who are probably the future of the Premier League and championship and all that stuff and seeing, you know, the confidence and, you know, the desire and the drive that they have to be great at, you know, the the ages they are, you know, it's a completely different world from playing against top academies in the United States. It's just like the way that they see football and approach it, it really gave me a better understanding. And it's like, one thing that it really helped me with was, you know, I used to see myself as like, okay, like I'm still a teenager. I'm like, still like now I'm 20, like I'm still a young guy. I shouldn't be doing this. But, you know, going over there really gave me the confidence to be like, like my age doesn't matter because I know I have the football and ability. Like, you know, the sky's the limit. You look at players like Holland and Bappe, they're, you know, our age and they're running football on a global stage. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Brilliant. So, you're in England and you're doing well. You're the, you're the captain of the team. You're leading the team in goals and assists. And you do start to get, you do start to get interest. How was that experience of then being sent on trial at clubs like Shamrock Rovers, top clubs in Iceland, you know, their first team, they compete for the Champions League qualifying stages. How was that experience for you? Yeah, it was a, it was a great experience, you know, um, you know, my confidence is really up at the time from, you know, just bagging goals and, you know, getting so many wins with the, the team in England and going to those clubs, you know, I was confident. And when I went there, it really showed me that, like, look, these guys, like, for example, Shamrock Rovers, they played against AC Milan in the Europa League. And it's like I played with that team and I saw I played well with that team. And, you know, it really told me, like, OK, like, I know I can compete at, you know, top level and I know I can do this. And, you know, it really it was an extra push, like more motivation to, you know, keep going and keep giving 100%. And the same thing with Iceland, you know, it's a first division team. A lot of guys from the national team played in the World Cup, the Euros, you know, guys that came from Fulham, 
one of their guys just went to Ajax. Like it's a team of top, top players and being able to play with them and stand out and do what I did, I, it was a great experience. And I think it really helped me as a, like a footballer and helped me with how I am today. Yeah, no, definitely. Awesome. Now, for many reasons, we know that you couldn't sign for whatever reason, playing passports, EU. How did that sort of setback kind of affect you for the future? And how did you deal with that? Yeah, you know, definitely. Um, after, you know, I went to Shamrock and, you know, I, they told me, oh, passport, this, that. I was like, okay, like, I'm good. And, you know, it's not having to do with my playing. But um, I think when I went to Iceland, after I had signed with my agent and he had sent me there and I didn't get picked up for a similar reason, you know, I was really, at first, I was really down on myself and I was like, you know, maybe this isn't for me. Like, I couldn't make the team. I'm not good enough. But, you know, my mom talked to me and, you know, she really helped me bounce back and realize that, you know, even the greatest athletes, not just footballers, have these setbacks and, it's about how you come back from them. And, you know, one thing that has stuck with me is that you can't beat somebody who never quits. So, you know, as long as you're sticking with it and continuing to pursue it, you you can't lose. So that's kind of the mentality that I take on when, you know, something doesn't go my way or things aren't going right. Like you just got to keep pushing and keep giving 100% because giving up isn't going to help you. That literally leads me right into the next question. It's a lot of times in football, we focus on what's going on on the pitch. We talk about, you know, how you play, passes, goals. How important do you think mentality is for yourself, for footballers in general? I think mentality is everything because, you know, growing up in Southern California, there is a lot of great players and a lot of players that, you know, I'd see my friends go to the national team camps and, all that, et cetera. And, you know, I was playing for a good team at the time. And, you know, I see, I remember one guy in particular went to the national team camp and we're like, oh, this kid's like the best, whatever, yada, yada, yada. And then, you know, I didn't see him for a while. And then I saw him again when we were 17, 18. And, you know, he wasn't in the national team pool, wasn't going to college, wasn't going to play anywhere after. And I think it's just that mentality of, you know, being content, you know, it really can lead to your downfall if you're not careful. Because obviously, you know, I'm playing professionally. I'm at like a good club. I'm I'm happy with my circumstances, yes, but I'm not content. I'm not where I want to be at, you know. So I'm still continuing to work as hard as I can, put in extra work, you know, really grind it out to be able to get to where I want to be. And I think all that has to do with your mentality, your confidence to take players on, take shots, make decisions. It's all in your head, I think. Great. I love that. So now let's come back to sort of the U.S., right? And you're back in the U.S. What are the differences you see in football over here in Europe, in the U.K., that maybe you see or you don't see back in the U.S.? Yeah, um, I think one of the biggest things for me that I noticed is coming from uh, England and Europe, you know, they play, a, everything is in a really tight space, super quick, super fast, touch, touch, touch. And I think coming back to the U.S., I noticed that, you know, things were a little bit slower and a little bit more spread out. And, you know, I noticed that in Europe, when let's say, for instance, we're playing a match and, you know, we're trying to play out of the back and touch, touch, and, you know, maybe we lose the ball a few times or mess up coming out of the back. You know, in Europe, they'll have you continue to try and play the right way. Whereas, you know, in the U.S., I noticed, like, okay, things are going wrong. Like, let's just start going long and sending balls up the field. And I think in Europe, they're just more, they're just more rooted and loyal to the system that they're trying to play. And they won't switch up just because things aren't going right. Great. Now you're back in the U.S. You're going on a few trials, USL, clubs, and you do eventually sign for Forward Madison, your first professional contract. How big of a moment was that for you? And how, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, it was a huge moment because, like, ever since, you know, I was a kid, I'm dreaming of this moment where, you know, I'm playing professional soccer. And I remember coming out of the coach's office and just sitting on the bench and, like, crying. And I was so happy that I finally reached this milestone. But, you know, it, it was a it was a extreme joy, but it was very, you know, short-lasted because I know, okay, like, this is just a step. This is not the end goal. 
Right. This is just the start of what I want to accomplish. And, you know, it was huge for me and my family. And you now I'm blessed to be in the position I am. But, you know, this is just this is just the beginning of what I want to achieve and accomplish. Right. So it's just the beginning. It's your first year. Well, your first season that just passed. How was your first season in the USL? And what, what takeaways do you have going into year two? It was good. It was really good. Um, you know, I was able to get a, get a goal in my goal column. And, you know, I was primarily coming off the bench uh, as a striker, which, you know, it was a little bit difficult adjusting to a new position as, you know, I was always a winger or a 10 for my whole career coming up. So, you know, playing striker was new to me, but I think uh, having a great group of guys around me and a great coach really helped me to understand the position better. And I think coming into this second year, I'm really confident, you know, the, that I'm going to score a lot of goals and that we're going to win a lot of games and hopefully get a championship at the end of things. Yeah, I was going to ask, year two, you've signed again for Ford Madison. What are your goals for you personally and for the club? Yeah, you know, for me personally, you know, we have 28 regular season games. And so, you know, I'm personally aiming for 15 goals this season. And I think it's very doable. You know, a goal, a game should be the target as a striker, as a goal scorer. So, you know, I think getting 15 would be a great year for me. And hopefully I uh, win the golden boot as well. And I think if we're scoring that many goals, there's no way that it doesn't correlate to our club winning a championship. So... I think that's what my goals and the club's goals are this season. I love that. So now on this segment, we do the breakthrough, right? What would mm -hmm. you say would be your breakthrough moment? Or if it hasn't happened, what are you looking forward to? Um, breakthrough in like what respect? In terms of a moment in your career, you think like, yeah, like this is, this is, this has progress me in the game or a moment you think this is where I have to find myself as like mm. a footballer? Yeah, I, I definitely think my breakthrough came when I was 16 because, you know, from the ages of seven to 15, I was with the same coach and, you know, he was a great coach, taught me a lot. And, but, you know, as I got older and new players would come to the club, you know, I would just continue to fall down the pecking order. And, you know, he was, Tell me, oh, don't dribble, don't shoot, you know, just pass the ball, do your job. And, you know, I knew what I was capable of and I didn't get to do it. And it really lowered my confidence and made me feel like I wasn't a good player. You know, I thought I was just an average player who could do the simple things right. And when I was 16, I went to a new club and, you know, they played me in my position and they gave me the freedom to play the way that I play. And I remember I scored a goal. In the first game of the season, and you know, I'll never forget this. I scored a goal in the first game of the season. I was like, yo, like, I'm, I'm, I can do this. Like, this is what I do, and this is what makes me happy. And I don't know why I wasn't doing it before. And, you know, from then on, for the last couple years of my club career, you know, I was top goal scorer. We won two championships, went to England, still scoring goals. And I still have that same mentality of, you know, why not me? Like, I'm a goal scorer, a game winner, and there's no reason I shouldn't be. Awesome. Now, enough with these, you know, interview style questions. Let's uh, get into something a bit more uh, fun and entertaining. I'll just ask you a couple of short questions, and you just said, like, some of the first things that come to your mind, all right? All right, bet. So, let's go. three players you admire or that you, like, try to get your game after? Um, definitely Zaha, uh, Rashford. Right. And... Now I'd say Mbappe, but before right. I, it was probably Neymar. But now that I'm a striker, I'll say Mbappe. That that completely shocks me. I thought Neymar would, would be the first on the list. I know. I, I knew that was going to shock you. <laughs> All right. Now, best players you've played with or against? Ooh, we're talking about training or in, on a team? Uh, training, trials, forward Madison, just wherever. Well, the best player that I've been able to share the field with was... Uh, Daniel Sturridge. Right. Um, that was an incredible experience. And just being able to be like like two feet away from him and talk to him and learn from him was insane. Right. All right. Uh, favorite artist or favorite artist? Jersey Drake. Come on now. Drake, yeah. All right. I felt that. I felt that. Um, do you yeah. want to give us like a little uh like a little like tune? Cause I know you're like you're a big singer in the in the locker room. So if you oh, wanna spell something out. Okay. I don't I don't mean to put you on the spot or anything, but 
I might be too strung out on compliments, overdose on compliments, starting not to give up, stopping in the consequence, drinking every night because we drink to my accomplishments. Come on, bro. Right, see, you know I, do this. You know I, know, I, do this. I, I knew you would deliver. I, I never doubted you. All right. Sneakers or clothes? Sneakers. Every day. Word. I know you have a, a nice little collection. What would you say are your favorite pair? Um, Definitely my Jordan 11s. 100%. All right. Okay. All right. Now, World Cup or Champions League? To win? To win, yeah. World if you Cup. only had to win, World Cup? World Cup. For the U.S.? Obviously, right? Yeah, of course. All right. Me and Pulisic, bro. <laughs> all right. You heard it here first. Um, all right. I feel like I know the answer to this, but you've been surprising me today. So, assist or score? Come on, bro. <laughs> Bagsman, bro. Don't, you shouldn't even put that question in there, bro. I knew it. I, I knew the answer. All right. We'll go with the score for that one. All right, who has played an important role in your football career or in just, like, your development throughout your life in general? Uh, definitely a coach in L.A. that I've had who is, you know, he never coached me on the team, but he's always coached me on the side. And name's Coach Kelly, and he's been coaching me since I was, like, 11. And, you know, he's always reminded me to, like, stay grounded and continue to work hard. And when things aren't going right, you know, he always just says, just focus on your football and the rest will take care of itself. And, you know, I might get that tatted on me, but I literally live by that. Yeah. All right. I didn't even have this one down, but I know you have a good collection of tattoos as well. So best tattoo you have? Muhammad Ali. That's my favorite right. one. That yeah. was on your, what, your arm, right your leg? leg? On my right, right leg on the outside. All right. We won't have you, like, show us that one right now, but for another, an, <laughs> another time we can. All right. <laughs> what motivates you? Oh, definitely my family and my desire to be great and just achieve big things for myself. Awesome. Now, let's look five years into the future. Where do you see yourself? Five years into the future, I'll be, what, 26? Uh, I definitely see myself in the top five league in Europe. I'm not sure where, but I know that's where I want to be. And if I stay on this path, I think I'll be able to do it. I agree. All right. And lastly... Any advice you have for other young footballers? Yeah, I mean, just the advice that my coach always gave me was worry about your football and the rest will take care of itself. Because if you're scoring 20 goals a season, people are going to come, people are going to notice, and, you know, you, you won't have to do anything else. As a player, just worry about your performances and everything else will fall into place. All right, well, this has been great. Thank you for uh, thank you for your time. This has been episode one of the new segment, The Breakthrough on TF Squared, featuring Noah Fusion. We wish you the best of luck going forward with your new season, and uh, we'll definitely uh, be in touch. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. I love you. <laughs> All right. Love you too, bro. Appreciate you. Be well. All right.